نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله وصفيه وخليله بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وكشف الغمة وجاهد في الله حق جهاده حتى أتاه اليقين فزه اللهم عنا خير الجزاء وابلغنا مأمنة عباد الله يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى في محكم التنزيل بعد نعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam السلام الله عليكم ورحمته وبركاته We begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most high, the exalted the creator, the sustainer We begin by thanking him for the blessing of Iman we, blink, we begin by thanking Him for every, every blessing that we enjoy on a daily basis. When the Prophet ﷺ passed away, Umar ibn Khattab heard the news. And he was in a state of shock. And he couldn't believe that. And he walks in to the masjid and to the area where the Prophet ﷺ was laying and he would take his sword out and he would say if you say that Muhammad has passed away then I'm gonna kill you and at that moment Abu Bakr Siddiq anhu made a very famous statement. He came, he says to him, Man kana ya'budu Muhammad, fa inna Muhammad al Whosoever has been worshipping Muhammad, then Muhammad has died. Wa man kana ya'budu Allah, and, so, and whosoever worships Allah, fa inna Allah hayyun, and whosoever worships Allah, then Allah is ever living and in every <coughs> So, I want to begin my khutbah today, brothers and sisters, I know we just finished the month of Ramadan. And we understand. The pinnacle of Iman that we enjoy in the month of Ramadan, it's almost impossible to maintain that pinnacle. And I want to say that مَنْ كَانَ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ فِي رَمَضَانٍ فَإِنَّ رَمَضَانٍ قَدْ مَضَى The one who only worships Allah in Ramadan, then be aware that Ramadan has passed. And whosoever wants to worship Allah, that he can worship Allah in the rest of the year exactly the same way. <coughs> I'm stating the obvious, brothers and sisters. And I wanted today to, uh, to share with you maybe about four or five practical ideas. The feeling of high, of Iman, not of high of anything else, but of Iman, as we felt it during Ramadan, 
Just reflect back a few this last week on the 27th and the 29th night when you were at the masjid and you were just feeling so much <coughs> energy and you were so excited and you were especially, you know, look at the masajid and look at our state of iman at that time. Just reflect on that for a few moments. And now, almost a week later, we are feeling probably a bit down. We are probably feeling that why can't I continue the same, with the same energy, with the same zeal? What are some of the things that we can do, brothers and sisters? Some of the things that we can continue to practice that would give us or allow us to continue and maintain, maybe not at the same level, but at a level maybe a, a bit lower than Ramadan. So a few thoughts, inshallah, and suggestions. The very first one, brothers and sisters, the Prophet in a famous hadith says that whoever fasts Ramadan and follows it with six days from Shawwal, it is as if they fasted the entire year. And I encourage you. We've just come out of a marathon. Another six days won't be too difficult. Yes, it is difficult. I, I completely agree with that. In Ramadan, fasting was a breeze. We were able to fast 30 days in a row without even blinking. Alhamdulillah, most of us were able to go through that. We're able to pray taraweeh at night, wake up at odd hours, eat at odd hours. Our sleep cycle was messed up. But we were able to do it. But that's a special time. That's when the devil is chained. That's when the shayateen are chained. So this is a very special favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that allows us to go on that level of iman. So I want to remind you, in the next remaining 24, 25 days, try. Try your best. Any six days. And the beauty is, the reward is extraordinary. As if it, you were fasting the entire year. The second suggestion I would have for you, brothers and sisters, is increase or maintain masjid attendance. And why do I say that? If you reflect back on the first uh, or the, the 30 days of Ramadan, what was something special about that time, those 30 days? We were in the masjid very frequently for Isha and Fajr, for Taraweeh, for other prayers. <coughs> the masjid sort of brought about and gave you the opportunity to connect with each other, to be in that company of other people. Remember, just being in the masjid is just not being in the masjid. There are malaika of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there are angels who descend upon, who are present. And that gives you that comfort, that feeling of peace, that feeling of tranquility. You know, the very famous hadith about the seven people who Allah would give shade on the Day of Judgment. All of you know the hadith. Sabatun, yudhilluhum Allahu fi dhillihi yawma la dhilla illa dhill. There are seven types of people who Allah would shade under His throne when there will be no shade on that day. And what are, who are those? Imam al-Adil, a just ruler, and a young man who spent his, his life even from his youth in worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why do I say that? If you, if you only spend some time on that hadith itself, brothers and sisters, you would be so amazed. These are difficult qualities because, guess what? We have a lot of youth today here and many of us who have passed that point, we understand the attractions of this world and why is it so difficult to be in the worship of Allah. And then the third category, وَرَجُلٌ 
قلبه محلق في المساجد. And this is the category that I'm talking about here. And a man whose heart is in the masjid. He's coming to the masjid. He is thinking about attending salah. He is keen on attending prayers in congregation. Mu'allakun bil masjid. His heart is in the masjid. He's waiting for prayers ahead of the prayers. I know sometimes it feels like these are words and concepts that are repeated over and over, but I honestly would say to you, if you want that level of Iman, if you want to be in the company of angels, if you want that peace and tranquility and that high that I'm talking about, وَرَجُلٌ قَلْبُهُ مُعَلَّقٌ فِي المساجد. Be among those, be from those people. Frequent the presence in the masjid. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave this honor to Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that this masjid and the root of this house of Allah goes back to the first house that was built by our father, our father Ibrahim alayhi salam. Inna awwala baytin wudhi ala nasi dhabi bi bakkata mubarak. The first house that was built by our father Ibrahim alayhi salam was the house in Mecca. So we are so fortunate that this ummah was given a perk that no other ummah was given. What was the <coughs> Prophet was saying? Ju'ilat li al ardu masjidan wa tahura. The entire earth was made a masjid for me and it was made pure for me. If you go back to the previous nations, they had very specific requirements to be only their, their religious ceremonies and their salah was only could be performed in their place of worship. But it was <coughs> from the perks given to the Prophet and his ummah that this ummah was given the opportunity to worship anywhere on the face of the earth. Everywhere, every piece of land is made pure for them. So be in the masjid, brothers and sisters. The third point I wanted to share with you is about good companionship, good friendship. Brothers and sisters, think about that. Why were you feeling that level of Iman in the month of Ramadan? You were surrounded by people, by friends, who picked you up for the masjid, who picked you up to do something good, you were in the company of people who were all <coughs> aiming towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> the same concept can continue to be outside of Ramadan, brothers and sisters. Al Maru ala deen khalilin. The Prophet says this. The person is on the religion of his friend. The religion of his friend. That every one of you should look who is your friend, who are your friends. Who do you like to hang out with? Who do you enjoy company of? Who are the people who you look up to and you want to spend time with? Every Ramadan, look at that list. In Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you the story of the person who on the day of judgment, he, by mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, would enter paradise. And he would say, oh, they're all sitting and talking. They say, what about that person? I wonder where he is. I, couldn't, I can't find him here. And he's in Jannah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, every, every wish of any person in Jannah will be granted. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked him, would you want to see that person? He said, yeah, I want to know where he was. He used to, he used to hang out with, with each other. I can't, I can't find him here. And he'll be shown, he will be shown his friend in the pit of the hellfire. Inna hu kana li qareem. And he will say, what happened to you? And he realizes what happened to him. 
and he would turn around and thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, Laqad put the tabdeel. You almost got me into your ways. If it wasn't the fadl of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that was, I was saved, you drove me to the hellfire. But it was the fadl of Allah. It was the mercy of Allah. So brothers and sisters, friendship and good friendship is paramount. It can make or break your life. <coughs> I will say it again. Good friends or friends can make or break your life. But Yambo Ahadukum when you call it the Prophet says, just look at who your friends are. So if you want to feel that level of energy and that state of Iman, we used to we're not gonna get there. I'm greeting myself. But surround yourself with good friends who are the reason to take you to Jannah. Don't make the mistake. Don't make the mistake otherwise. The fourth point, brothers and sisters, the second last, inshallah. The daily dose of adhkar and the daily dose of Quran is very essential. In Ramadan, we were able to recite maybe, you know, 10 pages, 20 pages, one just three just. We were able to finish Quran, hopefully, inshallah. If not, we are able to at least spend some time with the Quran, at least listen to some Quran, at least read some tafsir, and reflect on the meanings. Whatever we, I hope and pray that we are able to do more than last year. Because the goal here is every year, we should continue to increase our level. So if we were at 72, we should be this year at maybe 82 or 90. The next year we should be at 100. And the following year we should be at 110. We should continue to increase. Because, and the one thing I have to mention this to you, very, very, it's a very important point. Because if you don't bring this into your routine, it's very difficult to maintain. Unless and until, for example, about prayers. If you want to pray at the masjid, then figure out how you're going to make that as part of your routine. If you want to pray Quran or recite Quran every day, figure out a practical time for you. And the Prophet has said, Early mornings are typically the best time to recite. It doesn't matter, all 24 hours are perfect, but the early mornings of the day. The Prophet says, my ummah, there was barakah put in my ummah's time during the mornings, during the early hours of the day. It could be before Fajr, it could be after Fajr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the Quran al Fajr. The Quran that is recited in the Fajr time. Quran al Fajr It will give, the Quran of Fajr will give testimony on the Day of Judgment in favor of the person who is reciting it. Find some time. Put some practices around, okay, am I going to, maybe you're driving to work for about an hour or 20 minutes or 30 minutes. Maybe you listen to the headline news and they turn around and say, well, okay, the rest of the time I'm going to recite my morning of God during my drive. Or maybe you're going to the masjid and you can just say, I'm starting to, I'll just spend that time in my God. Whatever time is fit for you, is best for you, you know that very well for you. But do something that is consistent. Every day you can repeat that over and over and over again. Until you bring these practices into consistency, it's almost <coughs> impossible to keep up. A lot of us are very distracted, very distracted. The technology that we carry with us is very distracting. Put it aside. Put it aside. Because the question is, what is the first thing you do when you wake up? Now ask the question, and I know a lot of people just reach out to the phone and look at the phone. And decide from tomorrow maybe, or today, I will not do that. The first thing I wake up in the morning, I'll pray. Don't do that. These gadgets are supposed to make our lives easier, but don't deprive the soul from its breakfast. Don't deprive
deprive the soul from its breakfast, brothers and sisters. The, the dose of Quran and the dose of Azkar is that breakfast that is going to bring peace onto your daily routine. If you spend some time, five minutes, three minutes, ten minutes, twenty minutes, maybe you pray for it and then you st stick on the, uh, on the sajjada, right, the diamas. Just wait for a few minutes. Makes it to us. What is the hurry? <coughs> like we, by now, you all of us know that there is no end to the, to the work that's around us. And I will say this. Our goal, the Prophet says, Qarubar Rahilu ila diyar al akhirah. My journey is about to end, and the time to leave to the next life is getting closer and closer and closer. Qarubar Rahilu ila diyar al akhirah. Fajal lahum makhaira umri akhirah. Oh Allah, make the, the last part of my life the best part of my life. وَخَيْرَ عَمَلِي خَوَاتِيمَهُ And the best part and my best deeds be the ones that I've done in the end of my life. وَخَيْرَ أَيَّامِ يَوْمَ أَلْقَاكَ فِيهِ And the last day of my life, or the best day of my life, the day that I'm going to meet you, O Allah. How are you going to do that if we don't ensure that every year, because we don't know when you're going to die. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on one side in the beginning of, I read the ayah, وَلَا تَمُتُمْنَا إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ And don't die except you're in the state of Islam. Well, how do I know that? The only way, when you combine the, this, this ayah and this hadith together, the only way for me and you to ensure that our, our ending is good, our last deeds are good, is to make sure that we continue to increase the bar every year. Every year from one Ramadan to the next Ramadan, Give some, some markers for yourself in your heart. No one's going to know that. It's you, between you and Allah. And finally, thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam complained to Jibreel alayhi salam. He says, Ya Jibreel, you know, my ummah, their ages are so less, you know, 60s and 70s. And how are we going to be able to compare to the previous nations whose ages were much longer? We know about Ibn Alayhi Salam. He lived for 950 years or, or more. So how are we going to, if they have worshipped Allah for that long, how we would compete with them? And Jibreel comes back with the, with the great news. He says, Allah has given your, your nation a very special purpose, a gain. You've been given this night called the night of power, Laylat al Qadr. The worship of that night, that one night, is equal to a lifetime. 83, 80 plus years. Thank Allah. Thank wow. Allah. And remember, my final thing, my final promise here. Remember, the nightly prayer of the Hajjud is not limited to Ramadan. Every night, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the third part of the night descends to the Sama al dunya and says, is anyone calling? Now you just imagine this situation, brothers and sisters. Allah Himself is asking, anyone calling? And how difficult it would be if I'm in the practice of praying Fajr. Just wake up five minutes before Fajr. Maybe ten minutes, maybe twenty minutes. It's whatever you can do. Inshallah, you have the practice. And Ramadan gave us that ability to, those of us who may have been kind of lagging, were able to kind of come back on my, our practices. Just wake up for a few minutes early. Pray a couple of rakat and make dua. Every day, you will see yourself, every day I have a new need. Every day there's a, there's a, there's a concern that I have. What about this? And what about this? And I need to be able to do this. Just stretch your hands to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya Allah. I'm, I'm begging you. I'm asking you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the reality. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to continue the spirit of Ramadan. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to really continue and adopt practices and activities that will keep that level of Iman high in our hearts, inshallah. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah.
الحمد لله كثيرا طيبا مباركا واشهد ان لا اله الا الله واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله My brothers and sisters let's evaluate ourselves Ramadan is really a training ground a training ground for us to be sure that we can continue this upward movement in our self development If we cannot develop every year, then how are we going to reach that goal that our best, our ending is the best? Unless you move continuously upward, how are we going to be able to conform to that calling of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَلَا تَمُتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَتُمُ السِّينَ And do not die except you're in the state of Tuna, in the state of Sikhsam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to become of one of those who would die in a perfect state of Islam, in a perfect state of Islam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would reward us and allow us to have the shahada on the last day. Have the shahada as the, as the soul leaves our bodies. وباكستان وجميع انحاء العالم يا رب العالمين اللهم اشف مرضى المسلمين اللهم اشف مرضى المسلمين اللهم اشف مرضى المسلمين اللهم ارحم موتى المسلمين اللهم من توفيته في هذا البلاء فتقبله مع الشهداء يا رب العالمين عباد الله ان الله يامر بالعدل والاحسان وايتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم وامنوا به يدافع عنكم واقيموا الصلاه